name is Benjamin Bailey, and today I'm going to be teaching you an introduction to using layers in GIMP. Let's go over and grab an image. Okay, so I'm going to start off with this photo I took down in Florida with this tree. I'm going to drag it into GIMP. Okay, now the first thing I want you to notice is over here there's the layers panel. Okay, we have the channels, paths, undo, but the most important one that we want to concentrate on right now is layers. Okay, so as you can see, we have this little thumbnail image of our main image, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, I'm going to add another image. I'm going to go down here. I'm just going to scroll over a little bit and uh, grab this image. I'm going to drop it in. And this adds another image as another layer, okay? So, this image is portrait and it's being put on top of our original image. Now if you click this little eye button it will hide this image and you'll see the original image underneath it. The only reason you're seeing these lines right here is because we currently have the show layer boundary turned on. So if I turn that off you can see that this image disappears completely. But if I turn it back on, toggle it back on, voila! It's there again. So that's a way to hide the layers, but you can see you can overlay the layers like this. Another thing I want to show you is this opacity slider. Okay, so now since I'm selected on this layer, now if I take this slider and move it, the image will slowly vanish. What I'm doing is turning down the um, opacity, which effectively increases the transparency. So if it's at 100, you can't see the tree at all. Um, underneath this image, but as you go down about 50%, you can start to see the tree, and then all the way down, and the image is gone. The same as if I just turned on or off this eye. But the opacity panel allows you, this opacity slider allows you to micromanage how much you want the image to be vanished. Okay, now this may not seem that useful right now, but it can be very useful. Okay. I'm going to add another image. Let's go over here and add this little dandelion. I'm going to drop that in. Okay. So now we have another landscape image. Once again, we can turn on or off these eyes. And as you can see, these are just being stacked on top of each other. And if I turn down the opacity, you start to see that image. Now if I select this layer and turn down the opacity, you start to see the tree underneath it all the way down there. So if I turn these really low, it looks kind of strange, right? Okay, so let's turn both of these way back up. Now I want to show you something. Okay. You can move the layers up or down, okay? So just use these arrows. So I'm currently selecting this dandelion. So if I hit the down arrow, it moves it underneath this flower thing. Now if I take the background picture down here, I move this up. It goes on top of the dandelion, and now it's on top of everything. So we can just put things back to where they were by moving these arrows around. And voila, it's back to the way it was. Now, what we can do is we can take this image, for instance, and then we can do what's called a mode. Okay, each layer can be turned to a certain mode. Currently, they're all set to normal, which means that they're just the image with no special effects applied to them. But if I take the top layer, then I go down into this drop down menu. You can see that we have a whole bunch of options dodge, overlay, screen, divide, multiply, etc. You don't need to worry about most of these right now. In fact, most of the time I just use normal and overlay. But these other options are useful, so it's good to learn them. But right now I'm just going to be focusing on a quick run through on the layers, so don't worry about all these different modes. I'm going to show you just a quick sample of it though. Now if we choose Overlay, for inst instance, I'm going to uh, disable the view of this one. I just want the uh, dandelion to be going all the way down to being overlaid on top of the tree. Okay, now if I take out the visibility of the dandelion, you can see the tree looks different. If I put it back in, the dandelion is affecting the tree. Now. If I take this layer and I turn down the opacity, it turns down the layer 
opacity and effectively how much this overlay mode is affecting the tree beneath it. So that's just an example of one mode you can do. There's all sorts of different modes and they're very useful for different applications depending on what you're needing to do. But for our situation and for your situations most of the time you probably don't need to use a whole lot of these. So I'm just going to delete this one because we don't need it. It's just getting in the way. And um, by the way, if you want to delete things, down here in the corner, there's this little trash bin. And you just click that to delete a layer. So if I wanted to delete that layer, oh, man, I want that layer back. So I hit Control-Z, and it comes back. I hit Control-Z again, and this layer comes back. I'll turn it back to normal real quick. Got the dandelion back. Now let's just get rid of the dandelion because we don't need it. So I'm going to delete it again. So that's how you delete things. Now I'm going to show you another thing about layers. I'm going to quickly add, I'm going to quickly delete this one too. We don't need this. Sorry. Um, I'm going to add the text tool, okay? Now I'm not going to teach you how to use the text tool right now because right now I'm just giving you a quick, quick overview of layers. But now we have this hello text flying in the sky. Okay, we can place it wherever we want and it's another layer on top of the background. If we move the background up, the hello goes goodbye. But if we put the hello on top, it's still there. Now, down here, there's another button you should know about. It's called Duplicate. You can duplicate the layers. So in this case, if I hit Duplicate, I have another hello. So it's hello, hello. If I duplicate it again and again and again, I've got another hello. And then if I take this one, ah, got another hello, another hello. I have hellos everywhere, okay? But the problem is, what if I have all these hellos lined up just where I want them, okay? I have them all lined up in accordance to each other, and I want to make sure they're all together, okay? If I had to move them, say, even five pixels to the left, I would have to manually move each one and get them realigned. But what's nice about layers is you can link the layers. If I go in here and I link these layers, voila! They are linked. I can just move them all at once. So that is incredibly useful. Um, because oftentimes you'll be overlaying layers and doing things on top of each other. But they need to stay intact. They need to stay together. Otherwise, you're going to have to do a whole lot of adjusting. So we're pretty much done with these texts. So I'm just going to delete most of these. I'm just going to leave one of these hellos. So just stick it in the sky. All right. Now, what am I going to tell you next? I'm going to tell you about creating a new layer. Okay, so if you hit this little um, little paper button down here in the corner of this layer panel, you can create a new layer. So I'm just going to call it, um, I don't know, I'll call it Bob. Okay, you can call the layer whatever you want to call it. We'll call it Bob the Smile. Okay, because I'm going to draw a smiley really soon here. Bob the Smile is our new layer name, okay? Background is the default name for the original image you start with. So no matter what your image is, well, if you drop it into GIMP, no matter um, which image you drop into GIMP, the background is always going to be called the background. But if you um, add more images on top, they're going to be called their original name. So in this case, this layer, the Create New Layers, we're going to call it Bob the Smile. We're going to leave the width and the height the same size, the same dimensions they are right now, because most of the time you want to leave whatever new layers you create the same size as all your other layers. There's hardly any circumstance when you're creating a layer like this that you want um, it to be smaller or larger. It just It's not very often that you need to do that. If you choose the foreground color to create a layer, it will create a foreground, foreground in the black. So if I just do that real quick, it creates a black. We don't need that. So I'm going to create a layer again. You can choose background color, which is currently set to white. And it creates white. If I choose that again, set it to white, of course, it'll set it to white again. That's just another preset they have. But um, our background's already white, and I already showed you that, so I'll just move on. And the final one is transparency. Transparency is very useful because you can put notes and other things over top of your image. So I'm going to show you that real quick. I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to move this text a little bit over here because it's in the way. Then I'm going to go to the Bob the Smile layer. 
I'm just going to quickly grab a brush. I'll teach you about painting and stuff like that later. But I'm um, just going to grab this brush. And I'm going to paint on these, this layer. Okay. And if you s see what I'm doing, I'm just painting a silly smiley face up here. That has bad teeth and messed up eyes. Okay. So this is a smiley face in the sky, right? I just painted it. But the neat thing about it is if I go over here and I hit this little eye button, boom, it's gone. I haven't hurt the tree underneath. I haven't hurt anything else. It's on a completely separate layer. And I've saved the rest of the image from being destroyed. But I can just adjust this as much as I want. I can even move this layer around if I want. So, and of course, I can turn the transparency on it up or down. So that's just a really quick overview of all sorts of th different things you can do with layers. Layers are incredibly powerful, and I look forward to teaching you all sorts of different uses for them with GIMP and image editing and manipulation. So stay tuned. This is Benjamin Bailey, and I look forward to teaching you more things. So uh, catch you later. By the way, today is my birthday, or it was 14 minutes ago. So uh, if you want, go ahead and wish me a happy birthday in the comments, and I'll be really happy about it. So um, catch you later. Bye.